I'm just here. This is my home, innit? That like, I used to work in that barber's over there. As you just saw, you can't really just come through and just think that it's cash because people are tense out here, innit? People are tense and it's for a reason, innit? Like, people are pissed off here. It's not just simple as, hey, I'm going to pass through and then say hi, guy. This is why I can't really understand when I see, like, like white celebrities walking through just anywhere, just, and they don't, they feel like they don't need no protection or nothing because when someone from the hood makes it, it's a completely different story. Like, just people seeing you filming me on this strip here makes me a target. But that's something that I need to factor in because <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't be scared because that's again something that someone's going to take into account. Don't worry, it's me, the one I'm trying to hold you to. But you see, like, it's love here. This is what I was trying to say. I, I was on um, Question Time one time and I was like, yeah. Um, I was in the audience trying to explain to them. They were talking about all the rights and that. And they were saying, oh yeah, there's no love in the community anymore. People are just programmed to be a certain way. And that makes us all like animals. And I got angry in it because them people, they don't know anything. And they're trying to talk like we're all animals and get me like, there's just some place where everyone's frustrated. So we just start fighting and killing each other and them thing there. While everyone's smiling and talking, you never know, like I could just get hit by a stray bullet. That is the reality, but that doesn't negate from what really goes on. I'm from a place where a lot of people die for nothing. That's why I gotta be alive for something. But since I ain't in the hood blazing zoots, I guess I'm supposed to be living good raising utes. I'm on edge right now, but the hood is mad. It's kind of mental, but that's just, that's kind of how it has to be. Like, I'm not gonna hide in my house. I got one line in one of my poems. I'm like, you can either stay inside and pray and hide. You can either stay inside and pray and hide or face the day in pride. Go outside and chase your dream. And it's, it's just that, like. Well, it's as mental as it is physical. Everyone here is cynical and it's all awkward. You're stuck in a piece of land that you call your hood. Nah, it's just like, I always feel like I got one foot in and one foot out. Cause I feel like I'm leaving for now. Like I'll be, I'll be back, I have to be back. And when I say we're stuck in the hood, that means heads ain't getting exposed. And if heads ain't getting exposed, then no one's got an open mind. It's like living an oxymoron to be in a, like a good family in, a, in an estate. Because the, the forces at play are crazy. when George goes, when, when the children go away. It's always quite sad, I mean, we're a pretty close-knit family, but um, children have to go, grow up, go away, and uh, what can you do? In the end, it's really what you want for them, isn't it? So, yeah. Of course, Georgie for another, for the start of his second year, and uh, I can only say goodbye and watch. <laughs> See, I'm dealing with words of a spoken kind, but others before me wrote them fine, and for man them to know would require reading, and we know man them ain't so inclined. So we're stuck in the hood. But you know what a hood does? It absorbs the rain and it blocks out the sun, stores the pain and it knocks out the fun, and just as sure as the good Lord has risen, the hood obscures your vision. The word ghetto started with the Jewish community, brother, but they never went brutishly shooting each other. Therefore, hood is not the same as ghetto. As with the synagogue populace, we are not synonymous. What makes our sin ominous is the fact that it's symbolic of the frolic of ignorance's prominence. Ignorance ain't bliss, it's an instrument for dominance. But we'll come back to that. We are originally from Uganda. We came here about two years before George was born. And um, yeah, it's been uh, 20 years now. It's gone rolled by so quickly. But yeah, he's, uh, he's been a good boy, basically. So you've been a good boy here and getting dinner ready? <laughs> good boy. I don't really have a choice, like. No one else is gonna do it. It's my turn. What are you cooking? What do we ever eat chicken and rice? <laughs> it's just chicken and rice, man. I know we're trying to fight stereotypes here. However, the myths are true. Black people, some black people only ever eat chicken and rice. So what's the hood? Slum after slum, back to back, when mum stacked for jack and sons packed the strap to run bags of crack. 
And words fly around trying to describe our condition, but at the end of the day, it comes back to black. When we came to, to live on this estate, which is obviously a council estate, we were quite apprehensive about how the children, you know, bringing up the children with all the stigma and the influences and everything else. And also, myself and my husband not having been brought up in this country, there are, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot we had, we did not know that we had to learn. I was saying this is a place that I identify with a lot, but I mean, more, more than I do with Uganda, because I, I grew up here, but I don't feel like I'm from here, number one. I don't feel like I, I really fit. Actually, if you ask me where I'm from, I say Uganda, and in a lot of respects, I feel like Uganda is my home, but that's not something that was natural. I had to go back to Uganda and kind of establish a relationship with her. When we moved into this house, George was actually a baby, he was under, under one year old. Um, shortly afterwards, the family increased to four. And we got concerned about um, the, all the four boys growing up uh, or in, a, in an environment that uh, was quite challenging for um, young black males, etc. But no, we stuck to our strong um, African values, strong family values, respect. I mean, um, unfortunately, yeah, we've had some battles about it, but yeah, there's a clear line between authority, parents and the children. My parents are amazing. My family is a, is a like, tight unit. I love, I love spending time with them and I, I love everything that all my relatives are about, really. That's one half of it. The estate is something completely different, and I feel like a lot of the time, my mum doesn't really appreciate how contradictory it is. I'm not one of them guys that pretends from, I'm not Chuck D. I'm just a guy from the ends and I got lucky. But in this position, you see, people listen to me. So I guess I'm in a position to stop fuckery, but I currently doubt if I could. Because as much as I want to be out of the hood, what's the point in running away? Leaving behind my dogs and becoming a stray? And I pose the same question to you. Once you've left for good, what do you suggest you should do? You're gonna jump through a window, let them figure it out, or hold open the door and shout, nigga, get out. Education was always a, um, a, of paramount importance. It was the one that was, was always going to liberate the children. Will It's the great liberator, if you like. So you used to put a good emphasis on that. Unfortunately, George was also uh, quite a bright child in school. He was very bright. Oh man, that is it. Sometimes when I'm revising, I go off on a tangent, I just write a poem. Because of what I'm writing about is so strongly linked to something I feel strongly about in the, in the community or something like that. Especially because I do psychology, sociology and politics. Especially with the psychology side of it, it just gets me thinking a lot about human nature. And that's more food for thought. But a, a lot of people's misconception about poetry is that it's got to be about a type of issue. Oh jeez, anything. As long as you've got an opinion, you've got something to write about. And who doesn't have an opinion? Cambridge was funny because when I got in, I felt like, yes, I've made it. Then I took a step back and said, what? What, what, what does that mean? What, what? So these people now define you because some people somewhere said, you're good enough for our institution. You're... And I said, nah, that's not, that's not what it is. Cambridge and I can work in collaboration to the end that I'm trying to get to. Just for his interview for Cambridge, George did say to me, uh, I said to him, listen, George, just be yourself. You don't need to change your accent. I said, oh, God, I've been trying how to work on my accent. I said, no, 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 you don't need to. Just be yourself. You've, um, you know, you've sort of talked about yourself and your background, which, he, which came out quite starkly in the, quite strongly in the personal statement. He said, yeah, I mean, I uh, grew up on a council estate, made, it, made my way into grammar school, etc. I said, listen, you don't, just be yourself. Is it George Bapanda? Yeah, I know. Bapanda. I don't know if we spent the same. You just know that this is a, uh, this is a face I have to wear now. And there are certain um, adjustments that I'll have to make. Rules of the game, play by the rules of the game, man. Don't take it personal. It's all business. People making stupid comments about your surname, it's just business, like. Don't take it personal. Your name sounds like a James Bond villain. Does it? Yeah. I'm Panga. I like Don't that. Don't you like think? It. You need a cat. I need a cat in it and, and like a, a sofa <laughs> from Ikea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a guy from the ends and I got lucky.
And in this position, you see people listen to me. So I guess I'm in a position to stop fuckery, but I currently doubt if I should. Because as much as I want to be out of the hood, what's the point in running away? Leaving behind my dogs and becoming a stray? And I pose the same question to you. Once you've left for good, what do you suggest you should do? You know, he knows that uh, we wanted him to pursue his studies to where they, as far as they could take him. Uh, so I think in a way, he feels that kind of obligation, all right, let's do that and get the old folk off my back. But um, to, be, to be honest, if George um, pursues a career that brings him fulfillment, that's all I ask. See, the money's everywhere, it's up to me to go and get it. We're positioned and luckily, but no one said it because they don't want you to know that. If David Cameron was born in my shoes, he would have sold crack. When government can't find the right wing for you, you reassess how you define the right thing to do. And all of these feds are just a necessary evil when second class citizens are secondary people. The state profits off nicotine and alcohol, so what's the difference between them and Al Capone? They do enough dirt to get mud on their vans. Caught red-handed or not, they got blood on their hands. They help themselves and we help us, but legal structures don't allow us to be retail fucks. So they take the moral high ground when we sell drugs. We're all part of the same hypocrisy. That's why in the name of change we gotta see We run up on the next country and claim democracy fam This world is run by gangsters in suits Who might as well physically give the shanks to the mutes But it's not our world We crap at the system That's why they clap the decision to throw us back into prison And this is capitalism Fucking hell So much family to buck in jail And you ain't gotta die to be stuck in hell I look at my mum and think, you hardly sleep, but if I give my guy a little plastic card, we eat. People are stolen from us, it's hardly deep, and you have a habit of sowing what you hardly reap. Mama, I just want to make your life partly sweet. But by your same love that put me in the sky, if you knew what I'd done, you couldn't look me in the eye. Then I look at my little bros broadcast, thinking, you and that younger one grow so fast. If anything, you look are overgrown, done. It's mad how you wear the same clothes for so long. I think about you bare, cuz How you literally go for months with no haircuts I just wanna see you styling in your kicks Facebook photos, smiling in your pics Cuz I brought you out the ends and I bought you Ralph Lorenz And you know when funds are low, I'm gonna sort you out again Cuz you're my mini-me's, I wanna take care of you like your great parents do I really wanna see the look on your face when we come back from a shopping spree And you're dropping teas that make your mates stare at you This dirty money's looking flirty, sonny being broke as a joke is Eddie Murphy funny. Looking at my reflection, staring through me, thinking I'm the only black guy in my year in uni. So many people are so proud of me, it's gonna break a lot of hearts if I take a shot as path, but coming from the outside of society quietly impacts the way you perceive the law. A lot of the things I used to believe before are now luxuries, I don't think we can afford that. Like, I don't trust pastors, but I believe in the Lord. I went from having fun as an MC to educating brothers that tempt me to run as an MP but what's the cost of becoming an MP? All I want to do is put the whole manners on but I ain't selling my soul to no Babylon I want to sing a song of faith but we don't have a song I love my race but can I run the whole marathon? My brethren said the places I've gone in relation to the estate that I'm from mean I'm allowed to do dirt to make it along He said even Barack took care of his own drama but did a man just compare me to Obama? That's when a voice in my head said, personally, I think if I do dirt, it's kind of worse for me. I ain't better than the next man, but when you think of it, in a lot of ways, my life is symbolic. So if I'm George Shaolin and Panga, I can't afford to throw the towel in in anger. We didn't even know half of what was going on. Now that the boys are older, they're telling us about their friends. I mean, the, the, the children they grew up with where so-and-so, or so-and-so is in prison, or he's this way, or so-and-so was stabbed. We really didn't know half of what was going on. But uh, it was not easy at all. But we stuck to our strong family values. No, I can't defy facts and figures and all of the stats and stigmas around blacks and niggas. I sinned so much, but I live to say I try. So the day I stop trying has to be the day I die. So I refuse to go the way a lot of crummy crooks would. But then again, that money looks good. <laughs> 